Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I have been teaching chemistry for over 20 years. I am here to help you feel much better about what you learned in class than what you feel right now. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you about naming molecular compounds. Now, if you need more information about anything else about writing or naming chemical formulas, go check out those links below. I have separated it all out into micro lessons just for you. If this is what you're looking for, go ahead and press the like button. Also, grab your periodic table, grab something to write with, and let's get started. So for naming molecular compounds, molecular compounds, that is the name that we give compounds that are held together with covalent bonds. Covalent bonds hold two non-metals together where the non-metal is going to come first. Again, this is a binary naming system. Bi means two, nary means name. So this system contains two names, a first name and a last name. The very most important rule about naming molecular compounds is that the first name cannot begin with mono. Now mono, that's a prefix and we've not really talked about that yet. Bear with me, we're gonna get to that. Just like with ionic compounds, molecular compounds, the last name, we're gonna need to change that ending to IDE. So the first name, you just leave it as it is. The last name, we change that ending to IDE. Now with ionic compounds, we were dealing with ions. So we had oxidation numbers and we had charges to kind of tell us what to do. With molecular compounds, that's covalent bonds. Remember, we're sharing electrons. There's no charges, no ions. So we're gonna use prefixes to define the amount. Let's look and see what those prefixes are. So here are 10 common prefixes. Now I'm hoping that some of these sound familiar to you from math or geometry. We've got one is mono, two is di, three is tri, tri, triangle, three sides, that should be familiar. Four, tetra. I normally think about Tetris, you know, the game Tetris where you have to move the pieces. You can move them four different ways. That's why it's called Tetris because tetra means four. Penta, a pentagon has five sides. Hexa, hexagon has six sides. Hepta, hepta is seven. Octa, octagon is eight. Also, we know about the octet rule, eight. Nona is nine. Ten is deca, you know, like decade, deca. So if we're looking at a molecular compound, we know that it's a molecular compound because the first element is a nonmetal and the second element is a nonmetal. When we look to see that that first element is a non-metal, that tells us molecular, we need prefixes. So the prefix for two is di, and the prefix for three is tri. So we have di-nitrogen trioxide. Let's look at another example, CCl4. If we remember back to that rule that I said was kind of important about first names not beginning with mono, here's an example of that. We have one carbon, and yes, the prefix for one is mono, but that one rule that I said was important to remember, you can never begin a name with mono. If the first element is a one, that's just an understood. So this is just going to be carbon tetrachloride. No mono for the one carbon and tetra for the four chlorine. Let's look at another example. In this example, that's not no, that's a nitrogen and an oxygen. One nitrogen, one oxygen. We just did an example where we don't begin the first name with mono, so I wanted to do an example where we start the second name with mono. So we only have one nitrogen, one oxygen. The first name never begins with mono, so that's just nitrogen, but the second name can begin with mono. So we have nitrogen monoxide. Now, the prefix mono ends with an O and oxide begins with an O, but if you notice, I did not put two O's because that would be weird to put two O's next to each other. So every once in a while, you have to drop one of the vowels just to make it sound right or look right. Naming molecular compounds, a breeze, right? Especially compared to ionic compounds. If you need to know about ionic compounds, make sure and check out all of my tutorials about that. If you need to practice molecular compounds, check the link out. I've got some practice problems and an answer key. If you found this helpful, make sure and share this with your friends. They might find this helpful too. Until next time, bye y'all.